welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I am its host, Philip Champion. The TV series called The Chosen, about the life of Jesus Christ, breaks all records of popularity and gathers an audience of millions around the world. It has already been viewed by more than 300 million people in 190 countries. The series was released in 2020 and immediately attracted attention because it was fully financed by crowdfunding. 75,000 people invested $10 million in the first season of the series. The second season was supported by more than 120,000 people, with approximately the same amount. The huge popularity of the project prompted the authors to release a special Christmas episode to be shown in cinemas. Moreover, it was originally planned that it would be at the box office for only two days, but when the tickets for $1.5 million were sold in 12 hours, the organizers increased the screen in time to 23 days. This is the largest crowdfunding film project in history. The series is shown on a free streaming platform. It is available for viewing in 54 languages, including Russian. In total, there are seven seasons planned to be released. A Russian documentary filmmaker, Sergei Miroshnichenko, has explained the success of The Chosen. The show The Chosen, about the life of Jesus Christ, speaks simply about difficult topics. There is an interesting situation with the audience these days. They may lack knowledge and not read that much, but they are still drawn to knowledge. I remember when I was shooting Earthly and Heavenly. I came to Patriarch Alexei II and he said, make a simple show about the history of the Russian Church. As for the series itself, the desire of its authors to tell the story as much as possible is almost apocryphal. To be honest, the story is told too simply, but that's the current trend. In this case, the crowdfunding path is the right path. An influential English newspaper, The Guardian, believes that the Church of England should follow the example of Anglicans in Wales and Scotland and give its blessing to gay and lesbian relationships. In June 2021, the Methodist Church became the largest religious denomination in the UK to allow same-sex marriage. Soon after, the Anglican Church in Wales voted to introduce special blessings for same-sex married couples. The Guardian writes that in April, a church-wide consultation on sexuality will come to an end, with its findings due to be published in the autumn under the title Listening to the Whole Church. The intention, according to the Bishop of London, the Right Reverend Sarah Malale, is to find a way forward for the church in relation to human identity, sexuality, relationships and marriage. A commitment has been made to establishing a clear direction of travel at a General Synod in February 2023. However, the Anglican Conservatives have argued that any change to traditional teaching on sexuality should be approved by the worldwide Anglican Communion, which has 85 million members. Given the strong opposition of almost all African Anglican churches to the LGBT movement, this would in effect ensure the preservation of the status quo. What's interesting is that within the Anglican Communion, each national church is independent. As the current Bishop of London has clarified, the way forward is a Church of England decision. According to The Guardian, as the Church of England seeks to renew itself in the context of declining congregations, it should, I quote, be bold in reading the signs of the times rather than rely on narrow readings of scripture. The Gospels convey a message of loving inclusivity. England's established church should reflect that. The traditional reading of scriptures would of course be very different to the one presented in The Guardian. The position of Christian denominations on the church blessing of same-sex marriages is pretty straightforward. The Roman Catholic Church believes that those people who enter into same-sex unions cannot receive the blessing of the Catholic Church. However, this does not mean that all Catholic bishops and priests agree with this. A number of bishops in Germany and the United States have already begun to bless same-sex marriages. In the Orthodox Church, the position on blessing same-sex marriages has always been unambiguous. For the last 2000 years, the Orthodox Church has believed that marriage is a union between one man and one woman. Anything else is regarded as blasphemy against the sacrament of matrimony. 
The hierarch of the Orthodox Church of Greece, Metropolitan Seraphim of Piraeus, believes that it is now absolutely necessary to convene a pan-Orthodox council. The Metropolitan recalls that granting autocephaly to schismatics without their repentance and their illegal restoration to holy ranks has brought the Orthodox Church onto a dangerous path. He noted that the Patriarch of Constantinople erroneously and without having any rights restored to hierarchical dignity the clergy of the Russian Church who have been defrocked. This is not supported by the holy canons. In this case, the question is not whether it was good or bad that the Patriarchate of Constantinople had granted autocephaly, but to whom did they grant it? They gave it not to the canonical church of Metropolitan Anufri, which was previously recognized by all Orthodox churches, but to a crowd of deceitful people who to this day seem unworthy of this highest rank. Le Petit Robert, a popular dictionary of the French language, recently created a gender-neutral pronoun. This has caused widespread discontent among the French people. The personal pronoun il is a merging of the masculine pronoun il with the feminine pronoun elle. Some French people regard this as an export of American ideology into French culture, while others hail it as a travesty, an abuse of the French language. After all, French, like other Romance languages, is very gendered. Most nouns are either masculine, such as book or hat, or feminine, such as table or coronavirus. The First Lady of France, Madame Brigitte Macron, has reacted to the appearance of a new gender-neutral pronoun in the dictionary with the following words. Our language is beautiful, and two pronouns are appropriate. A French member of Parliament, François Jolvier, described the move as an attack on France itself. He appealed to the French Academy, founded by Cardinal Richelieu, which for almost 400 years has been considered the guardian of the French language and literature, with a request to ban, I quote, an obvious ideological invasion with the aim of desecrating the common native language of the French and undermining its influence. The Synodal Liturgical Commission of the Russian Orthodox Church has come up with a prayer service for those obsessed with an online addiction. In the online era of our age, a computer addiction has grown into a mobile addiction. According to a study by the London School of Economics and Political Science, 89% of interactions with phones were unprompted, with only 10% responding to an alert. Checking your smartphone is largely caused by an urge of the user to interact with their phone that seems to occur in an almost automatic manner, just as a smoker would light a cigarette, the study says. The researchers noted that users spend less time on the phone when talking to other people. The smartphone is used most of the time at home and in public transport. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that the United States had a direct involvement in the current crisis in Orthodoxy and that they had a special mechanism formed in advance. As the minister noted, the US Special Representative for Religious Freedom, in fact, I quote, actively set up and financed Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople so that he would pursue a line towards a split, including in Ukraine, first of all on the creation of a schismatic non-canonical Orthodox Church of Ukraine there, which caused serious disagreements in the whole Orthodox world. Sergei Lavrov added that the Greek and Cypriot churches are now under tremendous pressure from the Greek government. However, in his opinion, diplomacy and the state in principle should not interfere in the church affairs. The US State Department, in turn, is making accusations against Russia. It claims that Russia is and I quote, using its orthodox identity to promote its geopolitical interests. The State Department also stressed the importance the United States attaches to the promotion and protection of religious freedoms. Protecting religious freedom or belief, including the freedom of religious minorities, remains a key element of US foreign policy. Individuals should be free to make decisions about how they express their religious beliefs, without outside interference, including from foreign governments. What's ironic is that American officials have repeatedly met with representatives of the Greek churches, as well as the head of the schismatics in Ukraine, Mr. Sergei Domenka. 
former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo even boasted on Twitter that the international recognition of the so-called Orthodox Church of Ukraine was his main political achievement. Well, this is all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on The Orthodox View.